my name is Buchi Okoro. I'm CEO and co-founder at Quidax. Quidax. Um, that's really interesting. Quidax is a cryptocurrency company. Yes. Um, can you tell me what recent thing happened that's exciting at the company? Um, <laughs> we have a lot of exciting things, but I have a feeling that the one you want to hear about is our license. <laughs> so we recently got um, approval in principle um, for a crypto license, a digital asset exchange license from the Nigerian SEC. Um, it's super, super inside, um, exciting. It's something we've been working on for a very long time. Uh, one thing I want to learn from you is there's been a lot of, because I cover fintech as well, there's a lot of how companies like yourself, like crypto companies with licenses, can help facilitate cross border payments on the continent. So that's a very big problem. Is that something that's exciting for you as well? Yeah, I think um, it goes to one of the very core characteristics of cryptocurrency, right? Which is um, mobility, versatility, and velocity of, um, velocity of money. Um, you know, and and I think we'll see some of those gains, right? And um, with money, moving money within Nigeria, from outside Nigeria into Nigeria, from in, um, from Nigeria out as well. Um, and I think like beyond that, there are a lot and lot and lot of gains that we'll get from cryptocurrency, both from in terms of like taxes, right? Capital gains tax, taxing crypto companies, right? Um, and then there's also human capital, right? Because crypto companies that are doing business in Nigeria would need to hire, right? Um, so hundreds and hundreds of of people are now able to get jobs because you know we have like licensed crypto entities so i think the benefits um, of cryptocurrency regulation and crypto in nigeria is like huge huge and immense and this is just the beginning oh, that's interesting um the theme for this year is building in africa for the world is that something that quidax is thinking about like using um your african team to build global products or you're just focused on africa for now so we're somewhere in the middle of that right our vision is to create a world where sending money and value around the globe is as easy as sending a text message right um and to do that what we're trying to do is create a bridge between africa and rest of the world how can the rest of the world talk to africa and africa talk to the rest of the world um financially right because we're excluded from a lot of um financial opportunities because we can't move money easily right so um you're doing business in nigeria see so you're selling digital art and you're trying to get money from someone in ukraine right how do you do that right um paypal is not going to help you the really don't onboard Nigerian merchants for payments, right? So our options are limited. So how can we build a world where Africa can talk to the rest of the world financially and then, you know, vice versa, two-way communication. And those are the rails that we're thinking about building. And we're building it for Africa because Europe, they've sorted themselves out. US, they have all of the infrastructure, right? The West, they've sorted themselves out. But like, you know, who's really building for Africa? There are a lot of interesting startups doing that now. But um, so us being part of that, that project and that solution is kind of like where our focus is so we're in the middle we're trying to bridge africa to the rest of the world um yeah that sounds very interesting you're saying there's a lot of value on the continent that's not yet been um, extracted that's what you're going for immense value immense immense value and i mean as a business as a person you think about where you want to play where do you what's your competitive advantage right um um Think about the US, right? Think about crypto exchanges in the US. Um, they have Coinbase, right? Beyond Coinbase, they have all of the systems that make moving money work, right? Um, Europe, you have <laughs> tons and tons and tons of exchanges. These guys have been doing these things for a long time. And in fact, the way they think about crypto is very different from the way we think about crypto. You're telling me about cross border payments, right? Um, we in Africa think about crypto as utility because our problem isn't solved yet. Mm. But there they think about crypto as an investment class, primarily. Us, we think about function first because we have to eat, right? We need all of those infrastructure before we start thinking about investments to build up the capital for investment. Um, um, so, yeah. Okay. Um, another thing I want to know from you or learn from you rather is emerging technology. What emerging technology is making you wake up every morning and say, ah, Aquidax, we need to be doing that to make our customers' lives easier. Um, so I'm going to go very low tech on you. I think a lot of the stuff that we have today is just improving it, right? I'm sure a lot of people would expect me to say AI and I think AI would change the world, but like better customer support right 
um, a better chat system that allows customers to get to us in real time, a better product that, so it's, if you ask me <laughs> emerging technology, I'll say training, right? Training to invest in our people, more um, training ed tech to invest in our people to build better for customers, right? So I'll first solve for low tech, right? Before um, I start thinking like the, the advanced stuff and the advanced stuff is, is fun, right? We're doing research into all of that, right? Um, and looking for how to apply to our business, right? But like we still, there's still a lot of opportunity in the, in the middle, right? Before we start going to the fringe. Um, I think is there anything you want to talk about that I haven't asked yet that is, that's interesting to you? And you spoke earlier today. Yeah. How was that? How was that like? The, what did you say that resonated with the audience? Um, I mean, like I, I just got off the stage, so it'd be good to maybe speak to a few people to get feedback, right? But like I was talking about my own experience building, uh, and then sort of sharing some of my experiences, right? Not, not necessarily advice, but some of my experiences um um and you know for some people we just need one more idea it's not like we're lacking ideas or we're lacking the know-how some people just need a reminder some people just need one more idea to unlock um the combination of the safe right to get them to what they need to get to do um and where they need to get to right so just sharing some experiences um yeah i, I personally had a good time it was it was <laughs> it was short so it was a five minute keynote right and here's what's interesting about a five minute keynote a five minute keynote is harder than a 30 minute keynote yeah because right? there's so much things you want to say yeah like what am i going to condense in five minutes that would resonate and make sense with the audience. um or you know with the audience right it's easier to speak for five to for 30 or one hour than five minutes it's just for two hours than 30 minutes right because then you have a lot of time to ramble on get to your point you know so preparing for it was fun i've, I've never done a five minute keynote before um refer it was fun because like i'm having to condense everything that i can possibly see into like very sniper um points yeah I, I, it was fun yeah. thank you very much for your time Butch. thank you so much mukta yeah, um it's nice been a pleasure you. thank you